Today's video is brought to you by Sandbird. Guy chained up, covered in branding scars while holding a transcript, warning about Zionists and the Clintons. Earlier videos explicitly show him being branded. 235 views. Uploaded 2016. This was posted on the Deep Into YouTube subreddit a year ago, back in 2020. A link was provided, which has been deleted for violating YouTube's policy on violent or graphic content. While this could have been just a random video, this was a start into a much larger and way darker rabbit hole than I first anticipated. This post wasn't even scratching the surface. This is the darkest, most unknown and scariest rabbit hole that I've ever seen so far, no exaggeration. It's beyond me that practically no one knows or cares about this topic. Today, we will take a look into these videos. Videos that span across multiple channels. Videos that might even explain the intentions of the perpetrators. To think that these videos are available for 5-6 to six years on the biggest video platform in the world is beyond grasping imagination. Before we dive into this, I want to thank today's sponsor. Sandbird. The majority of us probably use fragrances in our everyday life. Whether it be a cologne or a perfume. Sometimes you want to use a specific designer perfume which ends up being too expensive to even consider buying. Sandbird offers a great solution for everyone. Sandbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over 600 brands. Each month, you are able to choose whatever designer fragrance you want. You'll receive a 30-day supply to try out. This way, you're not paying the full price for a bottle that you might not even like. Instead, you can choose a fragrance for a fraction of the full price to try out. I think that Sandbird is a great new way to introduce expensive perfumes and colognes to people that want to try out expensive fragrances without spending too much money. Also, if you are unsure as to what you would like to try out, they provide a quiz on their website to find a product that fits your persona. With Christmas season starting soon, their cologne and perfume gift sets might be something to consider as well. It is a flexible subscription, so you can skip any month without penalties. You can get a decent amount of high-end fragrances for just $16, and then decide if you'd like to get a full-size bottle. And with my code Eudoxia, it will be only $11 for your first month. Check the first link in the description box if you are interested. Thanks a lot to Sandbird for sponsoring this video. At the time of encountering this, I wrote it off. Neither could I prove the authenticity of the post, nor was there any other valuable information shared. Additional shared links containing graphic content were all removed by YouTube. The videos even span across multiple channels, yet everything had been wiped off the internet. In the comments beneath was a user that shared a lot more information. He shares a few links, leading to videos of different channels. In total, I managed to find 5 channels that still exist. There definitely were more than this, but they either have been banned or aren't really traceable. Before we proceed with the videos, I want to state that the victim's name is Juan Carlos. I also managed to find his full name, but more to that in a moment. Let's start with the YouTube channels. The first and one of the more interesting ones is the channel called Aristio Santiago Cortes. Let's watch this first video together.
And this is pretty much the entire channel. A guy chained up, crosses on his skin. He also lost a lot of weight. I will later show you pictures of Juan Carlos, where he had a lot more weight prior to his abduction. There are also occasional changes in terms of location in these videos. Here for instance, it's dark outside and there are pieces of paper next to him. Written on these are all kind of conspiracy nonsense. This applies to the titles and descriptions as well. This definitely has its purpose, but we shouldn't read too much into this. Interesting to note are the names on these papers. We'll discuss this in a moment. In some of these videos, the cameraman shows the surrounding area. Here, they clearly are outside. Besides this, it's almost always an identical video in terms of content. The cameraman shows the names and what's written on these papers, maybe shows the surrounding area, shows the crosses on the skin of this guy, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Also, in none of these videos do we hear the victim talking. Here, they are inside again. Notable is the interior of the building. It looks abandoned. That's probably why he feels confident taking him outside to film as well. One could maybe consider this as a fetish of some sort. Maybe even an ARG, art project or a troll. While this seem like possible explanations at first glance, the likelihood of this being fake will dramatically decrease with the following clip. I can't show the video at all, and I don't really understand how this is still online after 5 years, but in this one, the guy behind the camera steps forward. He heats his furnace iron or whatever it is and… yeah, it's definitely, 100% the real deal. It's beyond me how this remains available on YouTube. However, this video still feels kinda off. It's without a doubt real but they seem very inexperienced or even insecure with how they torment the victim. Maybe the guy is forced to do this to Juan. Actually, keep this part in mind. This is extremely important. I'm certain that I even know who this guy behind the camera is. The guy who is doing all of this. Moving on to the second channel, Anti-Imperialistas. This channel contains the most information by far and is a lot more interesting than the first channel in terms of giving context. This channel was uploading in 2015. Interesting to note is the victim. He's dressed and completely unidentifiable due to the tape and towel on his head. Then the cameraman proceeds to film the entire writing, from left to right. That's the entire video. He basically did this nine more times. Every video is the same. Actually, now it starts to get really interesting. There are multiple interviews featuring Juan. Interesting to note is the body of the victim. He seems to have a lot more weight compared to the videos we saw earlier. Everything is in Spanish, so I had a viewer transcribe and translate the interviews to English. Huge credits to Ezra. Without their help, we would lack a lot of information. Also, thanks to ATL, Civic Sunset 22 and Not Aim Trine for their contributions. All of them are native speakers or at least understand the language and it helped out tremendously. Let's start with the first interview. Haremos el siguiente cuestionario en la voz de Aristeo a Juan Carlos Muñoz Ledo. Adelante, Aristeo. Sí. Juan Carlos Muñoz Ledo Contreras. Sabemos de tus diferentes identidades, cuentas bancarias, pasaportes. ¿Dónde está el dinero restante? Pues ya fue drenado. Ya no hay. Bueno, esa es tu respuesta. Se te acusa de diversos delitos haber matado al presidente Chávez, matar a científicos del programa nuclear iraní, intento de asesinato de los hermanos Castro, sabotear la presidencia de Putin en Rusia, 
generar conflictos entre Ucrania y Rusia, asesinato del líder de la Revolución Islámica de Irán e intento del actual Ayatollah, intento de asesinato contra Maduro y diferentes sabotajes contra estos países, además de China, Bolivia, Argentina. ¿Cómo se declara? No, con todo. Se te acusa del sabotaje y desprestigio a la UNAM. ¿Cómo se declara? No culpable. Se te acusa del bloqueo de dinero de Irán, Venezuela, Cuba y Rusia. En este caso, ¿cómo se declara? No culpable. ¿Por qué sigues ayudando a Estados Unidos, Europa y sus aliados? ¿Hay dinero de por medio? No, no lo hay. So this guy, as we know, is called Juan Carlos. His full name is actually Juan Carlos Munoz Ledo Contreras. Juan Carlos is being accused of numerous very odd things. It seems very unlikely that he's behind all of these claims, and he obviously pleads not guilty. I know that all of this sounds extremely strange and unbelievable, but there's a reason why the interviewer accuses him, but more to that in a moment. Let's continue with the second interview. Adelante. Juan Carlos, ¿eres cruzado? No. ¿Qué hacías en Kiev? Ocasiones. ¿Qué es la operación Casiel Gabriel? Esa operación compuesta no la conozco. ¿Dónde están los servidores? ¿Con qué has operado? Ya no están, ya no existen. Estuviste en el hospital muy grave. Sí. ¿Cuándo fuiste golpeado? ¿Hubieras preferido morir? No. ¿Por qué sigues protegiendo a Estados Unidos, Europa y aliados si a nadie le importa? que fueras infectado y que pudiste haber muerto? Por ideales. Third interview. Juan Carlos, ¿qué sientes al saber que se cancelaron tus derechos humanos? Nada. ¿Sabías que el presidente de la Comisión Nacional de Derechos Humanos era el abogado general de la UNAM? Sí. ¿Qué piensas de eso? Pues nada. ¿Qué sientes de que todas las instituciones están en tu contra? Nada, era de esperarse. ¿Qué sientes de que Karen Ramírez haya participado en tu infección con el virus de hepatitis? Tristeza. ¿Estás dispuesto a dar tu vida aunque nadie te ayude? Sí. And the last one, the fourth interview. ¿Te sientes desilusionado por perderlo todo? No. ¿Sabes que cualquiera te puede torturar y a nadie le importa? Sí. ¿Sabes que no hay consecuencias de lo que te hagan? Sí. Con las autoridades no les importa. ¿Sientes justo el uso de pentotal sódico y lo que hizo Víctor Cerda? ¿Cómo? ¿Sientes justo el uso del pentotal sódico y lo que te hizo Víctor Cerda? Pues justo, no, bueno, quién sabe, es un método. Y lo que él hizo, pues es cosa de él. ¿Eres agente de alguna agencia nacional o extranjera? No. There are another set of interviews, this time in a hotel room. While the questions and answers are oddly exactly the same as in the prior four interviews, Juan seems to be not all there mentally. He could have been drugged or is just physically exhausted. 
Interesting to notice also that we can finally see someone else in these videos. What this guy's purpose is or who he is is unclear, but it's obvious that he's also involved in one way or another. This is obviously a huge lead. I'll talk about this in the investigation part of this video. After these interviews, we again have a set of what appears to be videos of him getting tormented. I can't show any of these, but they are waterboarding videos. Odd thing is, in most videos his face is facing towards the ground, not the ceiling, making the entire process very ineffective. There are also huge pauses between the waterboarding, where he's able to rest, which also doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They also are not asking him anything. Normally, you would want to interrogate him to get a confession. However, out of five total videos, there's a single video where his face is facing towards the ceiling, and it's certainly the real deal. He still has a lot of rest time, but it's definitely the way to do it, if you know what I mean. There are a few other uploads on the channel as well, which appear to be even more interviews. They all are the same. The same questions, the same responses. The last video is of him sitting. The cameraman then holds something on his head. I don't think I need to elaborate this any further. There are also audios of him probably getting electrocuted. There's one more odd thing on the channel. A video of what looks like a contract. From what I was able to comprehend, Juan Carlos was infected with tuberculosis during the waterboarding process. It says something about an involvement of Cuba, Russia, Venezuela, Iran and China. A payment of $225,000, what appears to be his home address somewhere in Mexico City where he was probably abducted and a bunch of other names that appear to be his family members and people he went to school with. There are also fingerprints and signatures of two of his classmates. Also, some of these names are connected to UNAM, a university in Mexico. More to that in a moment. Before we get to the investigation part, let's continue with the rest of the channels. Third channel is called Mario Hernandez. This channel consists of very short videos. There are a total of 32 confessions. You can't see anything in these videos, but you can hear Juan and the guy that is questioning him. All of these are the same. The interviewer asked him the same set of questions he did in the interviews we watched prior. Interesting to note, however, is that Juan changes his responses. While he was always pleading not guilty and not doing what he was accused of, he now admits that he did all of those unbelievable things. Let's listen to the first two confessions. Mataste al presidente Chávez. Intentaste matar al presidente Maduro. Sí. Intentaste matar a científicos del programa nuclear Pacífico y Daño. Sí. The rest of the confessions are the same. The same questions and Juan confirming that he did what he was accused of. José Luis Romero Silva is the fourth channel. There were videos on here but have now been banned. Fifth and last channel is called Gloria Yurib Medina. These are videos where Juan is hunched down. Interestingly, these two videos are the only videos from 2018. All of the other videos are either from 2015 or mostly from 2016. In these two videos, he is getting tormented by a female. I can't show the video, but it's super odd. We lack a lot of context. Let's finally get to the investigation part. Before I say anything, keep in mind that I don't live in Mexico and I don't speak Spanish. This topic is already extremely complicated and it's even more difficult to piece this together as a foreigner, so keep this in mind. This is what we know about Juan Carlos. Juan is a university professor who was hired by Iranian people 
to develop a way to hack US communication services for terrorism purposes. And there's an article from 2016 covering this topic. While this article was released in 2016, the coverage was way earlier. In the article it states that the interview was conducted in late February 2011. As some of the people on Reddit already noticed, this guy is being held hostage by an ideological group based in Mexico. At least, that's what is assumed. This list was featured in one of the videos. Here they thank a few people. All are general political figures, various Mexican and Venezuelan politicians or lawyers. Some of them could be involved in this case. And there's one article from Univision. There is a lot of information in this one, so let me break it down to the main points. His full name is Juan Carlos Munoz Ledo Contreras. An investigation team called Univision Investigator conducted an interview with Juan in late February 2011. He was part of the High Academic Performance Program, better known as PAEA, at UNAM. UNAM is a National Autonomous University of Mexico located in Mexico City. This lines up with the address shown on the document. In both circumstances, it's located somewhere in Mexico City, his abduction and his workplace as a professor. Uh, Juan Carlos is part of a group of young people, some former UNAM students, who allege that a group of hackers or cyber hackers was created in that university to carry out cyber intelligence, hacking and creation of viruses with the intention of attacking US interests and under the orders of the embassies of Cuba, Venezuela and Iran. Juan decided to record all of this and report it to the authorities. He basically was a whistleblower that saved people in the US by recording evidence of a planned attack against them. He shared all of this information in 2008, so that's the earliest date we have so far. The vice president of UNAM, Francisco Guerrero Luteroth, brought Juan into contact with the Iranian and Venezuelan embassies. And there they plan to dismantle intelligence issues and attack the US. They plan on making publications to damage the public image of the US and to recruit multiple young people to create a computer virus to take multiple computers of the Pentagon offline. I know all of this sounds like a big conspiracy and bullshit, but Juan Carlos basically provided hour-long conversations as proof. And we now also know that he was tormented for all of this, and so he was most likely telling the truth. On top of this article, there was actually a documentary that seems to have been aired live on TV. There's a re-upload available from 2013. I didn't get this translated, but this documentary goes beyond the things mentioned in the article. Now we get to the spiciest part of this entire case. Do you remember the screenshot I showed you earlier? Now look at this screenshot from the documentary. It's the same guy. This guy is a friend of Juan. So his own friend is basically tormenting him. That's why the torture looks so weird and unexperienced. Well, he probably was pretending to be his friend. It's unclear why he's even involved in this case in the first place. As for the videos on the YouTube channels, they were uploaded in the time span of 2015 to 2018 and they definitely also are from that time span. Look at this writing for instance. He was holding this up in one of the videos. It says Trump and Clinton, so the earliest date is 2015 or 2016. So up until that point, Juan was still alive. It's entirely possible that he is still alive. Also considering the extradition document, he was probably extradited to the US. Juan can be seen as a martyr. The people that abducted and tormented him want to make an example out of him. They basically blame him for the deaths of the scientists and the President Chavez, since Juan is a member of the opposing political ideology. They probably don't suspect him taking their lives, but they are trying to make him responsible for it. They see him as a traitor. The problem is, the documents we saw earlier had his family members and classmates names on it. They most certainly see him as a traitor as well. Also his own friend is responsible for the torture. 
This makes everything even scarier than it already is. His environment and family probably knows of his abduction, but they don't care. They don't care what they do to him. They don't care what happens to him. They don't care if they take his life. No one does. Me and a few of you guys are still investigating this topic, trying to find out if he's still alive and whether we can bring more eyes to this topic to find the perpetrators. We know that his friend is involved, but who are the people that are pulling the strings? He also accused the vice president of Yunam in this interview, so Yunam is definitely involved in one way or another. And sadly, this topic did not receive any attention besides this article and a short clip in a documentary. Practically no one knows about this, which makes it an incredibly sad case. He prevented cyber attacks which were intended to harm innocent people and this is what he gets. He seemingly gets disowned by his own family, friends and colleagues. Multiple videos of him surface on the web, showing him slowly but painfully getting his life taken away. Or did he survive? Did he manage to escape? That's honestly what I'm still trying to figure out. I have no idea about the current situation in Yunam and Mexico City, but I refuse to believe that everyone living there is okay with this punishment. And so please, if you know someone that lives there, maybe share this video with them. Do not tell them to act carelessly, just tell them to contact me on my socials. I just need more information to find out what truly happened to him. The earliest date we have is somewhere in late February 2011. At this point, he wasn't abducted and still had a lot of weight. I imagine they held him hostage for a couple of years, but maybe they let him go after a while. There's also the question in the room as to why the abductors reacted so late. Juan shared all of this information in 2008 and even gave an interview in 2011. Why did they wait for so many years to abduct him? I'll consider making an update video in the future. And thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to sub and leave a like and a comment. I want to remind you that there is a 30% discount on Sandbird if you use the link down below. Feel free to check it out. I also want to thank my patrons. Specifically, I want to thank Lindsay, Arvin, Adrian Halcrow, 44, Crab, Eli Bueno, Solar9, Foster Bradley, Days Case, Santino Sierra, James Baker, Halo Hall, Angelica Marie Clark, Spooky Dual Set, AMKH, Bodhi, Vacuamente, Elsie Rabel, Victor, Synchro, Blankface, Pat Wheat, Jen, Billy Racine, Brandon, Sophie Baber, Mac Cheese, Babylon Lion, Boti Sattva, James Harrington, Melinda Elston, Diana Tiba, Kayla Noel, MG, Steffi Muse, and Clint York. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and goodbye.